I will be speaking about Abraham, and I will title this. Uh, uh, what you 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 own um, the title for the uh, for the sort is faithful service uh, to a faithful God. Um, faithful service to a faithful God. So I have just put a colon there and said lessons from the life of Abraham. Faithful service to a faithful God. Lessons from the life of Abraham. We will read several passages, but I will also assume that we we know the story fa- fa- fairly well, um, and so I will uh, take a passage in Hebrews 11. I'll take another passage in Gen- Genesis 12. Another passage, yeah, Genesis 12, basically 12 to 22. That's where the story of Abraham is. Genesis 12 to 22, um, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 8 to 9. But for now, let me begin uh, by reading Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. That's our text uh, today for faithful service to a faithful God, lessons from the life of Abraham. Verse number 1. The Lord had said to Abram, to Abram, this time not Abraham. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household, to the land I will show you. Are you there? I can hear paper standing. Uh, so Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. That is the word of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that as we begin to reflect on these words and the life of Abraham, that you will speak to us, you will minister to all of us. And as we do pray for that, we pray that the whole of this uh, uh, training, uh, the time that our brothers and sisters will be here, will be a time of blessing. You will reflect, uh, you will help them reflect uh, on their lives, their relationship with you, their calling, their ministry, and their future, uh, placing it in your hands. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rise up, continue with the journey. So, his father had moved here with his whole family. Um, I, I have a feeling that they continue to worship um, idols here, and you will see a little bit of that in Joshua chapter 24, verse 1 and 3. Felt a little more comfortable there. But this is not where God had called him. He needed to leave. Leaving, brothers and sisters, calls for obedience. And I pray that you and I will learn to be men and women who obey the voice of God. But secondly, leaving required a lot of patience. A lot of patience. And patience is endurance. Patience is tolerance. It's is persistence, is being able to, is fortitude, is, is forbearance. It's, it's that you are going through a difficult time. You are tempted to leave or to abandon the plan because you are not seeing the fruit as quickly as you hope to. And you are called to be patient and to endure even some level of suffering before you ever attain what you are looking for. So Hebrews 11 again verse number 9. Just a reminder. By faith he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents we are told. As did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. And now if we go back to Acts chapter 7 and we look at verse number 4, we read Acts 7 number 4. 
So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. Now, verse number 5 tells us, He gave him no inheritance here. Not even enough land to set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. And we have been told about the 400 years and so on. Now, patience comes in here because God has asked him to leave. And has told him, he's going to give him a land, some land, some inheritance. So he comes and settles in Haran. He stood not here. Moves down to Canaan. And though perhaps this is a place he will leave, he is told, not yet. He wasn't even given an inch. Now that is called a hyperbole. You know, in inductive Bible study, an, a hyperbole. He was not even given an inch. Now, of course, where he was was more than an inch, isn't it? <laughs> where his tent was was more than an inch. But this is, this is to tell you there was no comfort in Canaan. This is his land. This is where he will inherit. But for now, no, no place to settle, to feel comfortable. But there was a promise. So, patience. Why did God call me to leave home? Alafu hapa ananileta, na ninakaa tu hapa kwa matents. I can't do a foundation here. I can't build a proper home. My wife is asking for a home. And I am keeping her here in tents. Now, that is not what Sarah did. That's my own. Uh, uh, as a married man, I know that wives ask for homes. <laughs> At some point. They say, now, now children are coming. We are just in tents. We have no, we have no place at some some sometimes they, they, they ask now like the husbands here who live here uh, one wife asked sasa siku moja sasa tunakaa hii nyumba ya focus hapa sasa mkikosana na focus sisi tutakuwa wapi so you 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 are focus staff. Wewe unajiita focus staff. Na umepewa nyumba hapo ukae hata kama unalipa kitu kidogo. Ukimkikosana actually what they didn't want to say is ukikufa. Um, so where <laughs> Since since uh, since as a wife I'm not a focus staff. Sasa tutakuwa wapi? So they will ask for homes. And, and children will ask for school fees. So, so the thing is <clears throat> patience. So you've been called. You thought this land of milk and honey is this this tent here? These tents here? And for some of you, it's these CUs here that don't even accept everybody. <laughs> but remember, <laughs> remember when they don't accept you, it is you're just you're just reaping what you planted. <laughs> Cause most of you as you chairmen, see you dads and, and so on. So, so they don't accept. Before I left this you, I was the man of God. I was preaching fire and brimstone. Now I go back either to the same CU or to another one. They don't recognize me. They will not put me in their programs uh, until they, they, I have to, I have to, I have to prove that I am a real woman of God. And yet, just six months or a year before, I was their dad. Or I was their mom. Patience really. So you are, you ask, so what did God call me here to do? Now it's three months. Corona closed all these places. What did I come here to do? So for you to begin to see fruit, patience will be needed. Endurance will be needed. Sometimes you need to go to this visit and this other visit and vehicles are not there or fair is gone or the telephones you are trying to call are not working. Patience, brothers and sisters. You, you're trying to work with some students, trying to help them see how to interpret scripture properly. 
they don't understand. They don't see. And it takes you a year, two years, and you thought it, it would be, pop, it didn't happen. And you're wondering, did they grow even an inch? Did they grow even an inch? Patience is very, very important. And patience pays. But let me go back to my third point. Hope. Hope. Hope has to do with expectation, confidence, optimism. You are anticipating things that will happen that you can't even see now. You can't touch them. For Abraham, it is this new home that God has promised. It's not working, so I'm trying to be patient. But even my patience is running out. And you will notice patience running out for him when God has promised him a son. And it's not coming. The son is not coming. And, but there's a lady around here who appears that they can have a child. Like, can we try with, the, with this one? And then they, they talk with Sarah. They agree. Yes, you can take Hagar. Patience. Patience extremely important. But when it runs out, what sustains you? When patience runs out, it is hope that sustains you. Hope that things will be better tomorrow. And in verse number 10 of Hebrews 11, so we are looking at Hebrews and Acts. In Hebrews 11, 10, for he was looking, for he was looking for forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. That passage right there, you could say that is canon, but you need the description. The description of canon is not exactly this. The description of Israel is not exactly this. So here is a very hopeful, foresighted Abraham who has stepped into Canaan, has not been allowed to settle. In fact, as soon as he settled there, Kidogo, with his tents, there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land, and what we see Abraham doing is actually going down to Egypt. When he is in Egypt, because it's, this is where God is, this where God told me to come, and he can see the land looks okay, but he is not allowed to settle. So God, what should I do? And then famine strikes, like Corona did. Now he has to flee. He flees down to Egypt. Then when he is in Egypt, twice, he almost lost his wife. You know those stories there? <laughs> and he has to negotiate with Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, to <laughs> get his wife back. And it was difficult for him. And here in Canaan, even to bury his wife, there was no grave. The place he was promised, he had to buy a grave to bury his wife. So what do you call that? If you, you've been living in tents, mutualizema utoke kwenu, ati utapele kwa mahali, umetoka, umeenda, your father on the way. Your father has died. As you went, you settled somewhere. Your wife has died. As you went, you are looking for, you are looking for a place to flee because there's famine. They are about to take your wife, and you have to lie. But you know what is beautiful about anyway? Before I I go there, it is only hope. So Abraham. Abraham lived as a man who heard God's voice and left. And because he was not happy with his tents, he only had hope. There is a city, brothers and sisters. 
a city with foundations, not least types of tents, with real foundations that are dug into the rock. The architect of the city is not some architect in a company in Ur of Chaldeans, no. Not even in some uh, uh, law firm in, uh, in Haran, no. This is God himself. He is the architect, but he is also the builder of this city. And brothers and sisters, if you lose your patience, keep your hope alive. Remember that God called you before focus called you. Now you must keep that in your mind. God called you before focus called you. And you must follow that call. So focus is, is an intervening. It's part, of, it's part of God sorting you out to facilitate his call. So your call is beyond the one year you're spending here. This is a mini call into your purposes the purposes that God has given you and you are walking into your purpose you will need to to obey you will need patience and you will need hope praise be to God let me wrap that up uh, briefly with a few words here in way of uh, conclusion and say this call of Abraham to live is similar to the call to salvation. The way God called you to salvation. And we all have stories about how we became Christians. And there are hindrances. There are major hindrances to the call to faith. As there are to call to ministry. There are many hindrances. And one of those hindrances are our connections. Connections with our present world. Our present um, networks. When you are called to salvation, there are things you need to leave. There are friends you need to say goodbye to. There are habits you have to say, this doesn't augur well with my call as a Christian. And there are hindrances, and these are connections, connections that need to be disconnected. Even your call to ministry has hindrances. Some of those hindrances are connections. A brother has just testified here how he enjoyed uh, his school and these extra monies, 5,000. Those connections are hindrances. They needed to be broken. How do you break those? <laughs> how do you break those? You just say, I have had God. I'm stepping out. It's not very clear, but I'm stepping out. These are connections that need to be, to be broken. But there's another hindrance, and it's called fear of the future. Fear of the unknown. And Abraham had to, to overcome this fear of where am I taking my family? Where am I going? Am I going to leave this uh, home where I have? Am I going to leave these gods that I see every evening? Once or twice a month, I see the moon. And I, I'm able to watch it because I can see. Now, I am just hearing a voice. I have not seen God but with my eyes. I haven't touched him. The fear of the future is a big hindrance. And there are various fears. For me, I feared things like, also now I am leaving uh, uh, the government. And by the way, you know, at this, you didn't apply for a job. You were, by the time you graduated, you were posted. So, I was posted. So, I had a job. I had some kind of security. Now, I have to leave this job. And I knew that when I come to focus, I am coming down certainly more than two job groups downwards. So, how will I survive? That's a fear. How will I survive in the future? At my age, which is your age at that time, I worried about a husband. As a husband, will I ever get a wife? I worried about that. And some of you, uh, luckily, uh, sister here told us, uh, single and uh, and satisfied. But there are others who are single and searching. Will I? And I also pray that over time she will begin to search. Uh, but only, only in God. Eh? And that's with a light touch. Now, so I worried about those things. If God gave me someone to marry with this salary of focus, how am I going to pay dowry? Those are worries. 
And now I am leaving, I'm being interrupted. I had wanted to be to do a master's degree, I had wanted to do all these things. Now they have just interrupted me. What will happen to me after one year? Or after two years? What? Because I signed in a contract. I signed a three year contract. Uh, for Simon, it was maybe four years. Can be renewed once or twice. But at some point, for me, my 12, 13 years needed to come to an end at some point. What will happen to me? And I never did my masters. And I never did this and that. And I left my business. What will happen to me? The fear of the unknown. But another fear that needs to be overcome when you are living is the embarrassment of looking confused. Just the embarrassment at you now, at you now, at you now, at you now, at That just embarrassment, you can't explain clearly what it is. But I pray that Kimeo and others will help you articulate this somehow, even if it doesn't fit whether it's a church or it's a parachurch or what it is, but it is you are serving God and He'll, he'll help you package this ministry. What is this one year you are doing? What is this two years, three years, whatever it is? What are you doing? This call to live is at the call to salvation and there are hindrances to overcome. This call to live is also similar to the call of Gideon. If you have read the story of Gideon, who needed to destroy the idols of his father. Destroy them. He did it at night because he was afraid. He needed to destroy them just like Abraham had to leave and abandon the gods of his fathers and leave, he needed to do that. You too, perhaps for you, is not idol worship because anyway, you couldn't be invited to focus uh, if you're an idol worshiper. But there are other idols. <laughs> there are other idols that come our way. There are many. They are deceptively, uh, they beck on you very deceptively. They may even be very religious idols. Like the desire, uh, you know, God says, um, the Bible says, uh, it's God who gives you the power to create wealth. A wonderful passage there. And he actually does. And I hope that over time you will hear testimonies of how God has helped men and women create wealth. But do you know that particular verse can lead you to your idols? That particular verse? If you do not see it in the whole totality of the spirit of scripture, that wonderful verse can lead you to that idol called money. Well, people idolize money. Our sister confessed here that she had wanted to uh, be walking down the aisle and uh, painting uh, those uh, uh, pathways red um, just to make heads turn because she would be she would be one to, to make a name. Nothing wrong in being a great artist or being very beautiful or handsome or being a weightlifter or whatever it is and hitting the headlines. Nothing wrong. But the motives can become an idol. So you will experience these things. You will hear testimonies or uh, you know your friends uh, talking about, you know, you, you went to focus, me I, me, I got a job with a bank. Uh, some of them will, you know, when you are going to visit them to, uh, to ask them whether they can partner with you, uh, they might just come uh, dangling the... Uh, <coughs> uh, did you say, uh, like, how much money, you know? Uh, they, so they'll come... They, 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 you, you, so you will experience that, you know. You you are telling them, can we meet? Uh, can we meet in this near the CU there? Uh, and they are saying, no, 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 no. Let, let's meet in Java. <laughs> meet in Java. Now, when you go to Java, you are the one who invited them, but they decided it's Java. But you know how much it costs to to leave Java. <laughs> 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 the simplest thing that you can get out of Java with is, you know, they're asking for things and you say, Unadawa. 
it's basically ginger and a bit of do you know how much it costs so the, <laughs> the point i'm i'm driving here is that you will be tempted not once not twice you will need to be a man who says or a woman says i left god called me and i left i obeyed god i have patience i will patiently endure this i have a hope this one year will be well provided for this one year i will grow in my faith this one year my dreams and my visions will be sharpened i will be a better servant because i carved away one year or two or whatever other years god will give will will enable you and i went to serve the lord um god calls people in different uh, and they have different excuses for some and you'll find them in luke chapter 9 verse uh, uh, 59 to uh, 62 luke 9 uh, 59 to 62 let me go and bury my father let me go and say goodbye to my family i will follow you but let me go first and and bury my father let me go and say goodbye in another parable in luke 14 verse 18 to 20 again people were called and one said i i would love to follow but i just i would love to come for your invitation for your dinner but i just bought a new field i need to go see it In other words I got a few acres of land I need to go see before I come for your dinner or before I come to do ministry I need to go see see it I just bought five yoke of oxen I need to go try them in my new farm I just got married this is an interesting e- 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 excuse I just got married I can't just leave my wife just now or my husband I need to go and be with them and for Jews it's one year before you do anything and uh, there are other potential followers who fear to follow Jesus because they fear to be excommunicated from the temple and you can go on and and on for some of us Jesus calls you and requires you to obey and be courageous enough to live unhealthy relationships unhealthy relationships some of us will need to sacrifice that some of us will need to go to give up idols of the age like i have talked about money luxuries uh, pleasures of this of this life and so on we will need to leave some of those and say they will pend i am following god's call some is business relationships and partnerships that don't glorify god that need to be shelved for you to obey god only faith can empower you and the hope that things will be better tomorrow hope that i'm doing the right thing many years ago when i was answering the call I want I experienced the confusion that you might uh, also have experienced and I knew that I was making those sacrifices I was the second in my uh, family the second born and the only one who went to university and so and my father had died some years uh, back so I had responsibilities we were seven I was the second my older brother sacrificed not to go to university went to college uh, to get a diploma so that he can come and support the family and here the only graduate the only pride of the family is saying uh, that i want to resign from a fairly well government paying job to go to some other not very even the future is not very well known now those sacrifices only faith and hope as you obey god those are the things that will keep you But I have good news for you as 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 I wind up uh, for today. That when you are called to live like Abraham did. Obedience and faith, obedience, uh, patience and hope also have a reward. They have a reward. And you will find that in Genesis uh, chapter 12, the one we read, verse 1 and 2, this sevenfold blessing that God is giving Abraham He can't see it yet but it is there. God has it. And so Abraham has to embrace it and have a hope and a faith that it will happen. Verse number 2 of Genesis um, 12. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. 
I will make you a name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. If you examine that carefully, carefully, you will see seven blessings of Abraham. God will give him. He can't touch them now. He can't even see them. At one point, God told him, get out of this tent. Look into the skies. It appears you, you don't quite believe. Look into the skies. Can you count those stars? If you can, your nation will be as big as that. So these blessings, these blessings, these thoughts, these ideas, and the hope that we have, may the Lord enable you and me to keep hope alive. Praise be to God. So we have looked at living, living today. And we have said that what can sustain you as you have left is patience and hope and obedience. And I pray that as you walk into this path, you will not regret serving the Lord. The Fellowship of Christian Unions, Reaching Students, Changing Nations.